Hi, everyone. My name is Dylan Hun, and I'm a software engineer on the Angular Framework team. One of our biggest new features in Angular 14 is typed reactive forms, and I'm here to speak about some of the key points, both about the new types and about reactive forms in general. So I'm going to start with some motivating background for why we made this change, including details about the reactive form system. Then I'll give some quick examples to show you the kinds of improvements and bugs that you can now catch with typed forms. Then we'll get a much more in-depth exploration of key design details. And finally, we'll finish with some discussion of what's in store for the future. So let's start with that motivating background. In particular, you need to know about reactive forms. And reactive forms are one way to build forms in Angular. They require that you explicitly declare the structure of your form in TypeScript code. And this contrasts with Angular's other form system, which is called template-driven forms. Uh, but having this explicit data model gives you quite a few benefits, such as explicit state management, RxJS, and as of Angular 14, strict types. So in general, every form corresponds to a schema or the shape of your data. And uh, this is a TypeScript type corresponding to information about a party. It has inner objects like the address field. It has inner arrays like the menu. And it's not actually required to explicitly declare a schema, but it is good practice. So this is the corresponding reactive form. And as I mentioned previously, a reactive form requires us to explicitly declare the form structure, which is what we're doing here. So the address field is modeled as a form group, which has an object inside. The menu is a form array with an array inside, and individual fields as form controls. And previously, interacting with a complex form model like this could be fairly hazardous. For example, uh, this snippet actually has a bug. Uh, the value of place is a number, so calling substring on it is a runtime error. The goal of type forms is to catch this kind of bug at compile time. So the new types affect the entire model API surface, including ordinary values and subvalues, calling .get on inner nested controls, the observables used for state management, and all the rest of the model API. One of the big benefits as well is autocomplete. So now that all the fields on a form group are known statically, your editor can complete them. And that's a huge help when you're dealing with deeply nested or complex forms. Although this is a big change, it's 100% backwards compatible. All forms code can be opted out using an automatic migration. Uh, in particular, every usage in your app of a forms class will be migrated to the corresponding untyped class, which gives you the old behavior. So these would be classes like untyped form group, untyped form array, untyped form control. Users can adopt these types one control at a time and type a large form completely incrementally. So you'll, you won't have one big bang for your migration. You can do it at your own pace. Um, and along these lines, typed forms support gradual typing. And by this, I mean you can freely mix the old untyped and the new typed classes even in the same form, such as putting an untyped form control inside of a form group. And lastly, the untyped option is not going anywhere. Uh, in fact, it's actually necessary in quite a few cases, as I'll show you later. So the type forms issue on GitHub was several years old, and it was actually our top GitHub issue. So it was less a matter of if and more a matter of how. Um, and we have made previous investigations into typed forms. But just as Angular has evolved, so has TypeScript. And it's easy to forget, but TypeScript was actually quite new when Angular first entered beta. Uh, in fact, Angular shipped with TypeScript 2.0. In 2.1, TypeScript game map types, which gives the ability to transform one object type into another, um, then conditional types in 2.8, template literal types in 4.1. This is really cool, by the way. We're going to see more of this in a second. And uh, these TypeScript features are actually crucial for the typed forms implementation. So before we get into the nitty gritty, let's see some examples of sample reactive forms APIs and how the new types protect you from common errors. So here's our reactive form from earlier, again, representing a form for a party. And we're trying to call dot set value. Uh, dot set value lets us completely replace the value of the form and all of its descendants. But here, we're actually missing a key for house. And this now produces a compile time error in addition to the runtime error you previously would have gotten. And this tells us the property house is missing from type street string. Um, here, we've added a key but the name of the new key is incorrect. So again, we get a compile time error. Uh, number does not exist on the expected object. Instead, it should be house. We could have used patch value instead of set value, and that relaxes the constraint a little bit. Now we can omit keys. Um, this will only replace the value for keys that we specify. 
And this is actually fine. Uh, however, this will still produce an error because we're specifying an unknown key number. And the types for patch value will check that we only specify valid keys. So again, this is an error. Number does not exist on expected type. We also get the benefit of strong types when we're navigating fields with the dot get method. So more on this in a little bit. And we even have types in our callback functions. So we can subscribe to value changes on our form group, receive an update whenever that value changes, and the type of V here will be number. Uh, so if we try to use it as something other than a number, that's a static type error. So now that you have an overview of reactive forms and how types affect reactive forms, let's dive into some of the design details. One of the most important topics for understanding the design is the distinction between value and control types. So consider this form group for an address. You could access its value or you could access its controls. And these have two different but related types. The value is the shape of your data, as we saw earlier with the party example. So here, the value associated, associated with street is just string. But on the other hand, controls are forms container classes and they have values inside of them. So here, street is a form control which has a string inside. And a value type by itself is not always enough to fully infer the forms model. So this example value type describes a date and as keys for the day, the month, and the year. And on the right, we have one possible control type for the corresponding form. And in this case, this would be a form with three individual controls inside of it, three different fields. But there's another interpretation, namely a date picker widget. And date picker widgets are commonly implemented as a single custom control, which returns an object with three fields inside. So the value type alone is actually not enough to infer the control type. And this also illustrates one of the key reasons typed forms uses control types rather than value types. One of the trickiest backwards compatibility issues with typed forms relates to resetting the controls. So as an example, let's consider the simplest possible form, which is just a single control. Uh, and this example control contains a string. So you might expect that the type of this, uh, that the type of this control is just string, but there's a tricky detail, which is that when you're working with a form control, you can call reset at any time. And when that happens, the control immediately becomes null. So this means that you can't always assume the value is a string because any caller could set it to null at any time. And in previous Angular versions, this example would crash at runtime because you can't call substring on a null value. So Angular now protects you from these kinds of errors because the type of the dog control will be inferred as string or null. And TypeScript enforces that you have to handle the null case. But sometimes that's not actually the behavior that you want. In Angular 14, form controls have a brand new option called non-nullable. Instead of resetting to null, this control will now reset to its initial value. And as you might expect, this also removes the null from the controls type. So in this example, we've gotten rid of the nulls entirely, and calling dot substring is now type safe. So old code will have a constructor that looks like something like this, new form control with just a value. And this infers as form control of number or null. But with new code, you can add the non-nullable option, and that will cause this to be inferred simply as form control number. So another crucial backwards compatibility issue involves disabling controls and the effect that disabled controls have on the form's value. With Angular forms, disabled controls are not included in the form's value. And the original reason for this actually is that this is how native HTML forms behave when you submit them. Um, on a native HTML form, if you disable fields and then you submit the form, those fields will be missing from the submitted form result. Um, so Angular forms behave the same way, but uh, because of this backwards compatibility issue, it impacts the type of your form. Specifically, when you call dot value, any key in that form group might have been disabled and could be missing. So as a result, the type knows that each key is optional. To be exact, um, both the name key and the lives key here have a question mark after them, which is the TypeScript notation for indicating that these keys might not be present. And when you use those values, the type system enforces you have to handle the possibility that each key could be undefined. So in this example, when you're using cat.value, all the fields are optional because they might have been disabled. So that's a lot of undefines to deal with. Um, when you're working with dot value, every key could be undefined. You might have to use the question mark or exclamation point operators to navigate those undefines. And you're gonna be reaching for those symbols a lot. Um, as an example, 
We have name question mark to ensure it's not undefined, followed by dot substring. And uh, you should consider whether you really need that level of detail about whether the control is disabled for your use case. Uh, most use cases probably don't. So if you choose get raw value instead, the result will include all the disabled keys. And as a result, you don't need that optional chaining anymore because everything is guaranteed to be present even if it's disabled. So for many use cases, .get raw value is actually a better and safer choice than .get value. And that's not the only case in which you might have optional keys in your form. Uh, much of the time, you don't fully know the structure of your form group in advance, but there are still certain properties that we can exploit to provide at least some type safety. So on the one hand, if you know all the keys that might be present, we can treat them as being optional at the type level. On the other hand, you might not know which keys will be inserted, but as long as all the values are the same type, we can still provide some type safety. And then the final case is when you truly know nothing about the shape of your group and no type improvements are generally possible. So let's cover these cases in order, starting with known optional keys. Sometimes you wanna be able to freely remove keys from your form. Uh, and in this example, we're trying to call remove control on the name key, but that is an error because the control is not marked optional. So with typed forms, we can now explicitly specify which keys are optional using TypeScript's question mark notation for an optional property. This allows the type system to enforce that we safely handle controls that might be missing. So as I mentioned before, there's another common kind of mutable group involving unknown keys, but with homogeneous values. Uh, and as it turns out, this is actually really similar to a built-in TypeScript type called record. So a record is used for open-ended objects where all the, all the keys are arbitrary strings, but all the values have the same type. And so indeed, if we just provide a record to the form group type parameter, we do get exactly that behavior. But this type is somewhat complex to always provide explicitly. It can't be inferred. So as of Angular 14, we've introduced a brand new type called form record. Uh, this will let you add or remove any named key, but it enforces the constraint that all of the controls must accept the same type. So in this example, every control we add must accept a string. And there is no need for an explicit type, let alone an elaborate one as on the previous slide. Uh, this is completely inferred. Of course, as I mentioned earlier, some form groups cannot be typed. And here, we don't know all the keys ahead of time. We have two of them, but we're trying to add a third color. And all the values have different types, strings, numbers. So we can't make any useful guarantees about the values. And in this case, you should fall back to untyped form group. So as we just saw, we've introduced all these new untyped symbols, but uh, what actually are they? Uh, and as it turns out, no separate implementation is needed. Um, untyped form group is a form group where T, the type argument, is set to any. And not only does this help facilitate full backwards compatibility, it ensures the two types are fully interoperable and that you'll ship no extra code in your bundle, even if you use both. In addition to form group, we've also brought the new types to form array. So let's have a look. Form array will now infer its type from the controls inside and enforce that newly added controls match the expected type. In this example, we infer that the form array contains number valued controls, so we cannot add a form control of string. For heterogeneous arrays, uh, where you have many different types inside of the array, again, we don't know anything about the inner control types by definition, so you should fall back to untyped form array. We've also brought these type improvements to form builder which is a convenience API for quickly constructing reactive forms, along with some new convenience features for non-nullable controls. So here's a typical usage of form builder's group method. We have a name key, which takes the array shorthand notation containing a value and validators. We have a goal key, which is being populated with a bare value. And we have a where key, which has a value disabled object. So as you can see, form builder has an extremely polymorphic API. You can pass it bare values, value validators tuples, objects with a value and disabled key, and several more argument formats. And in the overwhelming majority of these cases, it is still possible to automatically infer the types. So indeed, in this example, the value of name will be inferred as string or null. As we saw earlier, we could create controls directly with the non-nullable argument to avoid having null in this type, but form builder actually now gives us a more concise way. Form Builder now has a new non-nullable field. When used with a group or array, it will make all the implicit inner controls non-nullable, 
without the need to repeat yourself on every control. So here, Pavel's name just has type string. So let's talk about dot get. Uh, I think this is one of the most interesting implementation details, and although you don't have to know how it works to use it, it is really fascinating. So here's the usage of dot get. Uh, you pass in a string literal, which is a dot separated path through your nested form groups, and you get back a control that has the proper type. So I promised earlier that we'd see some of the advanced TypeScript features from recent language versions. And for strict types, uh, dot get are on is only possible because of template literal types. Um, so let's see how this works. In particular, we have this type tokenize. It takes a string that you pass in, s, a delimiter, d, and tokenizes it at compile time to extract the names of the fields that we need to navigate. So s has to be a string literal. We check that first. If generally string extends s, instead it's a string variable and we bail out early. If s is a string literal, we can break it up using a template literal type. So somewhere in the middle, we look for d, the delimiter, then everything before the delimiter gets inverted as t, everything after it gets inverted as u. And then the result is t, the stuff before the, del the delimiter, followed by recursively tokenizing everything that's left. Then once we're out of delimiters, the result is just the string. Um, so this isn't the only helper type that makes .get work. Uh, for example, we have to actually navigate the form groups, but this demonstrates the general principle of how we implemented this under the hood. So I want to say a few words about our long-term plans for typed forms, especially other improvements that these types might enable down the road. So one common question I get is, what about templates? The current types only affect your TypeScript code, and we'd like to improve the templates as well. Um, so consider, we have an interface called Control Value Accessor. And if you've ever implemented a custom form control, you'll be familiar with Control Value Accessors. Uh, this interface is basically the bridge that connects data from your directive bindings in the template to your model classes in TypeScript. And you might wonder, can we just add a T type parameter? Um, and it's fairly clear how this would work in the simplest case, where a form control of string is just input type equals text. But what would we do about more complex types? For example, form control of string or number, or a form group of a form group nested form groups. So some open design questions remain here, and we are thinking about this for the future, but it's not yet solved. Another area we'd like to work on is non-nullable controls by default. This is currently somewhat verbose to express a non-nullable control, and although we do have the form builder dot non-nullable shorthand, it would be better if this were the default in all cases. So in the future, we'll be working, working towards flipping this flag. So in conclusion, Type forms are available today as of Angular 14, and you can upgrade to, the, upgrade to them immediately. Everything is completely backwards compatible. You can upgrade your app incrementally at your own pace and nothing will break. And we are incredibly excited about the future improvements that this unlocks. Um, so thank you so much and go build very safe, very powerful reactive forms applications. Thanks.